Conversations with Glenn Taylor shares Glenn's initial business ideas and the first wedding invitation concepts he brought to market. Other Taylor employees join in and share their thoughts about the company culture, how Taylor changed industry expectations regarding turnaround times, and Glenn's personal drive to build the business. He says, you gotta get a business. And I'm like, what's one? And then I started, I, ended, I don't know, I might have looked at five of them, but I ended up with that, we could we'd probably do with wedding stationery. And how would you do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time. I didn't know. The, the, I, I, I'll tell you the second time when I grew the company, that's another story. I knew what I was doing then, but not this first time. When I put those first books together, which we probably have around here someplace, I didn't know what the heck we were doing. I was just copy, I was a copycat. I took the other guy's products, put them in because I didn't know where, where would you get this stuff. Well, okay figured out. So the first time it was copper. It wasn't it wasn't anything that came from here. But then just once I did that and put out some books and then listened to the customers, then that whole process started working here. Oh, we got the wrong product. We got the wrong price. We got the or well we can get a better product or we can get a better price. It's working. And if it works with this crap, we could get it with some really good stuff. You know, it was more like that. Is that helpful? I mean, so the first time he just kind of said it and I did it, but it, it wasn't very sophisticated. Or oh, after I got that, I hired uh, Margaret Nelson, <laughs> trying to go back 50 years. Margaret Nelson graduated from college out of art design. And, and so I had to switch, you know, make these things. And so she was like, Margaret Nelson's art design. Okay, Margaret, I'm gonna design wedding invitations, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I know nothing. Okay, what do you want? Well, we have, I mean, I can tell you, well, we have this invitations, it's like this here, and then it has the panel in there, so it's, the press presses it down, so it's like, a, Panel, you know what I mean? Okay. I want the edge, right now it's just square and then the border. I want the, the edges to look like a, roses coming all the way down. I don't want it just to be a line. I want it to be roses. And then roses would come out a little bit further, in a little bit further and stuff like this here. Or something. That's what I'd say to her. Do you think you could do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The joint. She'd come back with, you know, six designs, you know, I'm looking for one. She oh, this is roses, this is, this is this different flower, I think this is this, and I think this is this. Oh, the other one's a lot better than the roses. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. That's getting into where you're saying. I mean, it took my mind where I was, and you got some kids that really started looking at it. Well, it'd be prettier if you did this, if you did that. That's... I started hiring the, the kids that would do that. It was a youthful environment because there were so many part-time college students there. Uh, and, and everybody had fun working. They were so accommodating with your hours. You could just do whatever worked out for your own schedule. So it was great. The original Carlson wedding service was a fantastic place to work. I mean, Bill had, you know, he hired all college kids. Uh, he adjusted for their schedules. And the people that I worked with down there were all great. I mean, they were all just really good employees. Uh, paid benefits, which is un, really unheard of at that time. Uh, it was just a very nice place to work. We were doing something that we knew no one else in the industry was doing it. And we were growing so fast. And we all, we were like a family, maybe, maybe 200 employees. I changed the service and how that, that was pretty much just me. I had to pound the dickens out of them. Order comes in. Get it out faster. Oh, we need two weeks. We don't need two weeks. We need 12 hours. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, geez. <laughs> we got to buy a piece of equipment then. Then could we get it out? Oh, yeah, maybe we could do it faster if we had a piece of equipment that does that. Then you'd have to take one of your students, and they were the best ones, 
You put them on the new equipment because they always were whatever the newest stuff, they knew how to do that. In the wedding business, all the competitors, it took two weeks to get your wedding order. So Glenn says, we're gonna turn orders around in 24 hours. We were always looking for a better way. And I don't care what field it was in, if it was in customer relations or a way to, to ship in different ways that would give us a leg up, uh, we weren't afraid to try new things. Every single day there's a better way to do something, whether you fold it differently or cut it up differently or design it differently. It was always, um, always a challenge and always an opportunity to find something new for the customer. We're in a service business, so the Saturdays meant a lot. It helped us climb, helped us beat the competitors out uh, in terms of deliveries and those types of things. When we used to work Saturdays, you know, he was, he'd be there. It wasn't, and nobody said you got to work Saturday, but if you want to be part of, the, part of where this thing was going, you, you felt compelled to, and it wasn't, it was easy. It was, it was fun. He created it by leading. I mean, it wasn't like he told us to work long hours to get this in, and then he walked out the door. He was probably there longer hours than the rest of us. It, it was fun, actually. It was very, very challenging. There's always something new, and I think that's what made me stay. Never a dull moment, ever. When you're hired 20 years old, changing culture is pretty easy. I mean, if they believe in you, you know, you think of the things that you learned when you're things. Good things that worked for you when you were young are pretty basic in here, you know? And that's the way most of our employees are. We did have fun. Sure, we worked hard, but it, it was fun. We, we just, there was an energy there that I haven't, I haven't seen in a while. Leaders, and this isn't just Glenn, leaders lead by example. And he, he always worked harder than anybody. You know, he, uh, the un unbelievable amount of energy and, and determination and, and just wanting to be there. And that's why I think other people felt like they had to, he didn't have to tell anybody because you saw it. Taylor's core purpose of creating opportunity and security for its employees came very clearly to Glenn. He describes when he first had that thought and now he knew that's what the company was meant to do. I was at work sitting on a stool, I think I was doing some typesetting because they were behind or something. So I'm sitting there, I need a R, T, you know, what I mean? <laughs> oh boy, no. I'm sitting there and it's, you know, see, I'll say it's like God, but I don't know what it was. Why are you doing this? Why are you sitting here doing this? things, setting the god darn type, which you don't even want to do, and sitting here. Well, the reason was I want to provide for other people the same job opportunities that I had. Opportunity, opportunity, security. I mean, I can remember this, and then I sat there and I said, this whole, thing, and it just came to me, opportunity and security. I'm here for opportunity. That's what God wants. I'm here for opportunity and security. I gotta get this, get this thing. Now what do I gotta do? You gotta buy stock. Mr. Carlson owns it. You gotta buy stock. I can remember where I was. I can remember sitting on that chair. I can remember that thought coming in here and stuff like this here. And then it changed everything, you know. I didn't immediately go in to see him. I had to come up with a plan, which he threw out. <laughs> and then, <laughs> throw it out. <laughs> but I think that's kind of, it, it's a number of things have happened to me like that. And I'll, I don't know how our brain works and why it works that way. But if you say, well, do you know? I know exactly. I know exactly where I was, what I was doing and uh, thing. And this thought came in and it has never left me. It's, it's so strange. But I think it happens that way for a lot of people. Stuff comes into your mind and you say, never thought of that before. I could have been doing it this way for the last 15 years, <laughs> but never thought of it that way. But that idea of opportunity and security then kind of says, well, what would you have to do? Obviously, I have to get, buy some stock and the rest just sort of, 
It was just that first little bit. The rest just sort of were logical. We called it our mission statement to provide opportunity and security for employees. You know, in today's vernacular, maybe that isn't quite <clears throat> strictly a mission statement, but it was for us. And it guided everything we did. Uh, whenever we looked at an acquisition or an investment in a startup, it, it was, um, could, could this take the company down? And could it put us in a place where it might endanger the jobs and the livelihood of our employees? Opportunity and security, it's like three words. I mean, there are mission statements that go on for paragraphs, and that's so simple, and it, and it answers everything. Everything that we did, is it an opportunity? And that's security, because if we're not growing, how can you continue to make money? Opportunity and security, uh, I, I think it's an ingenious thing that Glenn came up with, because it means so many different things to so many different people. I mean, what is this nebulous opportunity and security? Well, it's really, really kind of basic. And it, to me, it rooted from Glenn when he was a college student, um, how Mr. Carlson, when the wedding invitation season was over, there was nothing much to do. So he spent time painting, mowing lawns, doing whatever. We ended up doing the same thing where Glenn would, Glenn, well, and staff and everyone else, the management team would have, keep us on and we would do it for our employees doing things like pasting. I mean, I spent a lot of hours pasting in the off seasons, pasting catalogs of wedding invitations, sorting rings. We'd buy rings for scrolls and, and over from China and they had different designs in them and they'd come in bulk and they had to be sorted. I mean, it was really like crazy work, but it kept us employed. You know, he has such a sense of responsibility. And so he was going to create opportunity and security um, for everyone. And, and one of the things we really talked a lot about in my time at Taylor Corp was that we needed to do that for each other, right? We needed to make sure that we have a, a lasting and sustainable organization and that the kinds of decisions that we make um, have in mind that we're all doing that for each other, and that's the care we have for each other as a team of, of people who work together and, and care about the work that we do. I had an opportunity to, to get ahead. Uh, I knew the businesses we were gonna reinvest in, and, 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 the, and the security for me wasn't so much as I needed to be secure in my job. My, the security for me was what I provided for my family. And there's a lot of people that, that gain that. And it, 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 it's, a good, it's a good concept that will never grow old and can keep changing based on who interprets it. Don't expect it to be given to you. Ask for it, prove that you can do it, and take a risk and go for it. The, the opportunity part, which was obviously in most of my career because I you know, was always, always about growth, always about you know, moving on the next opportunity, the challenge or whatever, was uh, the growth of the company. And to have um, opportunity, you have to grow the company. I, I learned early on that this is the culture of this company, the profitability of the company, the idea of taking those profits and reinvesting in the company to grow the company, were, those are things that you, you don't find in a lot of different companies. Glenn could have, as he was growing, he could have taken and spent a lot of money instead of reinvesting it in the company, which he didn't. You know, he pushed it all back into the company, made the company grow, increased security. And I saw a lot of people come into Glenn many people and say, I want to do this. Can I do this? I want to be a manager. Will you help me? I think I can be a supervisor over here. I think we can do this. I think I can modify this press and do this. I think we can change this. What if we add this? I want to add folders. I want to do, it was always, and, and Glenn would just kind of, well, why don't you run with that? Uh, tell me what you need. Ultimately, opportunity security is kind of code for we got to have profits for those lean times and we got to have growth to keep our good people that want to continue to, you know, um, progress in their careers and help the company grow. We need a combination of all those types of people, people that just want, you know, I just want to get health insurance and provide a good service to the company and those that want to just go and drive the company forward. They were impatient. Sometimes pushy, I was that person, never taking no for an answer, always asking why, why, why. And I think in many companies, I would have maybe been shown the door, 
um, my attitude was actually embraced. And I remember pushing, pushing staff harder at that time, company president. He goes, I don't know what else to do with you. You just keep pushing, you get this done and you're really good, but I, you, you gotta go over and talk to Glenn and Brad um, because I don't know what else to do with you. I don't have anything more for you, Carlson Kraft, to give you what you want as far as the next challenge. And that's kind of how I ended up in California. We believe there was always a better way and who cares where you get it? Who cares where you get it? It's gonna make us better. Uh, it, you know, is it gonna provide more opportunity and security for our employees? It, you know, that mantra is just, it, it, it's in our heart and soul. It'll never go away.